Hi everyone, Wilbur here. In this video, I want to talk about uh, technological pedagogical knowledge or TPK. So technological pedagogical knowledge is just the intersection between technology and pedagogy. And Mishra and Kola defined it in 2009 as an understanding of how teaching and learning can change when particular technologies are used in particular ways. So essentially this is more to do with uh, the delivery of instruction rather than anything content specific, right? So an example might be using a learning management system like Canvas, right? It, um, it's more helping you organize your work and plan um, student work and get student assessments and things like that um, rather than teaching specific bits of content because you could, you could take Canvas as a learning management system or whatever and um, use that across every single subject area. So it's more to do with the field of teaching than it is to do with the individual subject area. So some important notes. Now, when we're talking about technologies, we're also talking about non-digital technologies. So whiteboards and books um, are examples of non-digital technologies, right? And in TPK, we're talking about what constraints those technologies have in instructional delivery. So for example, if, if we take um, a whiteboard, we might talk about um, how a whiteboard at the front of the classroom means that you have to arrange student desks in a way that gets them looking up towards the front, right? Uh, and which automatically means that students sitting further behind are more disadvantaged than students who are sitting in front or students who um, are colorblind need the teacher to use uh, specific colors or um, things like that, right? There, there are limitations to it. Um, and there, there are limitations to digital technologies as, as well. Sorry, I was just using whiteboards as an example because it was on my screen in, in my head. But the problem with many traditional technologies is they don't allow for the level of customization, personalization, ease of access, etc., that digital tools can assist with. So, uh, Something like, for example, um, uh, video recording a lesson. So if I, if I create a video recording of my lesson, a student can go back, they can rewind, they can watch it at a slower pace or a faster pace. Um, they can uh, pause it and then review it in, at a future date, that sort of thing. Whereas a traditional teacher teaching um, you know, in front of a, a whiteboard the students are limited to the one pace of instruction. They are limited to that very specific learning at that very specific time, right? So if they miss the lesson, they miss the lesson. They have to figure out another way to learn. So that tends to be a constraint. However, TPK becomes particularly important because most popular software programs are not designed for educational purposes. So for example, Microsoft Office is pretty much a business program right? It's not, they didn't design it thinking teachers are going to be using this with students. So it's up then up to the teacher to use their own ability to go back and see how can I use that technology inside my actual classroom um, during this lesson. And that essentially is what TPK is all about. Um, so that, as we just said, is the core skill of uh, TPK, identifying how a technology can be used in a lesson or class. So some examples of TPK, as we said, learning management systems, um, cahoots or software similar to that where you can create your own quizzes. These are just examples. They are unlimited. Um, screen recording or video lessons, presentations or multimodal software, things like that, things that affect the delivery. So um, Cole and Mishra also said that teachers need to reject functional fixedness and develop skills to look beyond most common uses for technologies, reconfiguring them for customized pedagogical purposes. Thus, TPK requires a forward-looking, creative and open-minded seeking of technology use, not for its own sake, but for the sake of advancing student learning and understanding. So essentially, teachers have an idea of what a technology is useful. This is a camera it's used to take pictures, right? Um, they need to look beyond that, see what they need to teach, um, and think about how they can use that technology in their um, pedagogical or in their um, instruction. 
how it can be used for assessments. Now, it doesn't that doesn't mean that that's the right way, right? So you might a teacher might do that and then go back to doing something more traditional. Um, but it's the fact that the teacher can see that that um, technology can be used for that particular purpose. So um, that's the importance of TPK. So how can we improve TPK? Specifically improving both content and pedagogy knowledge independently. So that one's nice and straightforward. So you can trial new technologies in the classroom to determine what works as part of a class or what doesn't and why. So one example is uh, OneNote classrooms. Most schools have access to it, or most OECD schools have access to it. Um, essentially, a teacher can use it, can trial it for one term, see what works, what doesn't, then can choose to either replace it or improve on it or get rid of it altogether, right? There's no, um, when we're talking about TPK or TCK or anything like that, there's no imperative that teachers have to use the technology. It's more about seeing what can be done with it, right? Doesn't mean it's always the best way. Um, and brainstorming with peers about how different technologies can be used in one of your units. And, and the trick here is to choose the technology first, then brainstorm how it can be used potentially um, in a less lesson, even if it's hypothetical. And as we said, um, you may not even use the technology in the first place. This is just a way you can improve your TPK. Okay, so that's it for this lesson. I hope it was instructional.